All right, well, a new Congress and new investigations, a lot of them. Democratic Congressman Elijah Cummings expected to be the next head of the House Oversight Committee, already sending the White House 51 letters demanding information on a whole host of things. Is this what we're going to be seeing over the next two years? And will anything get done in the next two years? The Republican strategist Noel Nickpour is with us. From the Federalist, Emily Jashinsky joins us, and Democratic stand strategist Antoine C. Wright is here as well. Emily, you're in D.C., so I may as well start with you. Boy, um, everybody's trying to predict what the next couple of years looks like. From where you sit, how aggressive do you anticipate the Democrats with subpoena power being in the new year? Yeah, that's a great question. I think uh, just about everybody here in Washington expects them to be very aggressive and to go just about full throttle um, investigating this president. I think that probably will grind things a little bit to a halt. The most activity we'll see out of the House of Representatives probably will be uh, these investigations because that's what their base wants, frankly. Right. Um, and, and gearing up for the 2020 primary, I mean, there, there's going to be a lot of activity in the Democratic base going forward, and I have a hard time imagining them not, uh, the, the Democrats in the House, especially with this new class of House Democrats, not going full throttle. I also think there is a political calculation to be made here, and Antoine, it would be interesting to know what you think of this, for the Democrats, is that do you sit back and kind of allow self inflict wounds to take, you know, or run their course in the Trump administration? You really go at them, to Emily's point, aggressively with subpoenas and the rest of it. As the Democrat on this panel, yeah. as someone who works with a number of the members of Congress, I will tell you that I think my friend on the other side is probably wrong. What I do think will happen is you will see an aggressive policy agenda coming from the Democratic Congress. That on what types of topics? That, that will speak to the hearts yeah. and minds of the voters that put them in the majority. So you will see a big focus on quality of life issues, like health care, infrastructure, like health care, yeah. like education, like immigration. And because here's what, here's what I know about the Democrats we have in charge now. They know it's one thing to get to the majority, but it's another thing to keep majority. Well, the what Democrats debate... want in 20 is to maintain the majority and expand their base, expand their number of seats, particularly in the Senate. I've heard over and over, Nicole, whether, uh, uh, whether uh, Noel, whether the um, Democrats have learned a lesson from Republicans and people go back to the 90s and say that, hey, the Republicans pushed too hard in the impeachment and everything else, the investigations of the Clinton administration, you know, kind of backfired on them. So now what? Well, you know what? And that's true. It, it did backfire. And I think that this is going to backfire on the, uh, the, the Democratic Party. So you think they are going to go after well, the I do. I think that they are showing right now, they're showing that their appetite is for impeachment of Trump. And really, it's health care, infrastructure, and everything else going by the wayside. I mean, they're, they're starting I, 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 several new yeah. investigations. I, I just I don't see that. What I do think you're going to see is you're going to see checks and balances yeah. and you're going to see transparency. You're going to see a Congress. Some investigations. No, no, no. You're going to see a Congress that's Emily going to show right. the American people that government can work again. And guess what? Right. We can legislate and investigate at the same time. The Republicans. No, just, I just, well, now so you're saying they are going to. So what are you seeing? Uh, no, I'll come back in a second. I know. I think I do know what you're saying. But Emily, what are you seeing uh, to back it up? Are you you're seeing uh, uh, from people like Elijah Cummings? Tell us what you're seeing in, in Washington. Right. Yeah, and I, I go to my colleague Molly Hemingway's reporting um, from, from earlier this year where she, she was hearing Jerry Nadler um, talk about how they want to go um, be, and be aggressive, but they want to do it in a palatable way. Um, and so they want to talk about accountability, holding this president to account. And to the, the earlier point, you can't, I don't think you're going to be able to have investigations and legislation at the same time because mm -hmm. you have to get everything out of the Senate. And the president is not going to want Republicans, and Republicans are not going to want to work with Democrats who are going full throttle on these investigations of the right. president. I just don't think well, you can then, have both. Well, then they will, be, they will be convicted at the polls in November if they do not want to work on quality of life issues. The Democrats the voters, will be, you mean. No, no, no. Republicans what? in the Senate, if, if Democrats pass legislation out of the House right. and it gets to the Senate and the Republicans who control the Senate will not work with Democrats to do what the American people want, then they will be convicted at the polls in November like just they think, were this time around on health care. I just think it's interesting that you know, Antoine is conceding that if they do go down on this road, you're just saying that you want them to work on the issues where that it is a political loser. Because so I thought maybe some Democrats would be open to the fact that, hey, we have some openings to go after this administration on some issues where we can win politically. I but actually think that it's going to backfire.
fire. I think that if they don't watch out, that they're going to end up being the party of no, the party of obstruction. What the Republicans were and, in 2010? Well, it's going to be. Well, that's what you agree with that, exactly. essentially. Exactly. We're flip that's why you're saying not to do it. it. I don't think they are going to do it, but what I do think they're going to do is hold this president accountable and form checks and balances. Well, but that's, that's the like talking point. That's definitely. That's the both. talking point. It's not the reality. That's right. what they're no, but that's, saying. You, yeah. can't right. say, you can't say it's not reality. Right. But talking yeah. about holding the president or the administration accountable is to hold these hearings and use your subpoena power. I mean, that's how you do but it, right? That's part of it. But there's another part, a component to this thing where you can do legislation. I think that will be done. Look, I think what you I think what, what you all want is for us to just press the mm -hmm. ignore button yeah. for the crime and the corruption that's going on in this administration. So, Emily, last point. Do, no. does, <laughs> the broad question, does anything get done over the next couple of years? <laughs> that's all, almost, almost what markets want to know, too, I think. Yeah. Sadly, I do think the answer is no, and I would love, actually, for bipartisan legislation to come out of this next Congress. I just don't think it's going to like be possible. Like the criminal justice bill. Well, there yeah. you go. On that note, you always get, yeah. Antoine always has that way of kind of sneaking Got one it. more line. <laughs> all right, thanks to all three of you. Uh, Merry Christmas. Thank you very much for coming on. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen set to meet with President Trump at the White House just about 30 minutes from now. Uh, things could get interesting. They will be discussing border security, the president staying in town over the weekend because of the partial government shutdown. As the administration deals with a new Supreme Court decision blocking the latest White House attempt to stop illegal immigrants from applying for asylum. And just last week, Secretary Nielsen announced the U.S. has secured a deal with Mexico, where some asylum seekers will stay in Mexico while their cases are processed. Here's Deputy Press Secretary Hogan Gidley on that. The United States, under Donald Trump's leadership and also with help from Secretary Nielsen, entered into a deal with Mexico in which people coming for asylum into this country through Mexico are now held in Mexico until their case is adjudicated in the United States. That saves this country billions of dollars. But it also shows a couple of things, that the Mexican government is now doing more to help our immigration system and doing more than to, to protect the American people than the Democrats are. Let's bring in Lauren Claffey, former Deputy Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs at the Department of Health and Security. Thank you very much. First of all, um, I want your reaction. The justice is ruling five to four with Chief Justice Roberts siding with the liberal wing of the court, uh, which basically blocks the president's policy on asylum seekers. It's going to temporarily bar uh, migrants who illegally cross into the U.S. through the southern border. Uh, the court says no, you can't do that. So the court's actually just saying that they want to kick it down to the lower courts again because this was just upholding the temporary pause on the ruling, uh, on the policy. So mm -hmm. basically they want to go it to go back down to the lower courts so they can debate the merits there. And then we, we expect that it'll come back up into the Supreme Court and they'll, they'll debate it more fully um, af at that point. But they want to keep make sure that the policy doesn't go into effect while that le the legality of it is being decided. Let's talk about Kirsten Nielsen's decision and an agreement that she announced yesterday between Mexico and the United States um, and how much money it really does save the United States by asylum seekers having to wait for their asylum uh, court proceedings to be completed in Mexico rather than coming to the United States, being assigned a court date, then waiting months, if not years, uh, before they actually go into court, and that is if they show up. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a great, I think you'll hear sometimes um, the secretary and others in the government discuss this safe third country uh, uh, agreement and what they're seeking in that. It hasn't been agreed to yet, but this is this idea that if people are fleeing the Northern Triangle countries, that they should apply for asylum in the first safe country that they arrive at, which would be Mexico. Um, thus far, Mexico has not agreed to this, and it's something that the U.S. wants because they want uh, people to seek the first safe place that they go, and that's the true meaning of asylum. However, our asylum system is completely overwhelmed right now. And I, I blame part of this on Congress, though, because they've known that we've been overburdened on a while, for a while on this. We don't have enough immigration judges down there to process these claims and that it's taking way too long for these claims to be processed anyways. And so people come into the country and they get lost in the system. And it's really not fair for anybody involved in it. And Congress has not granted any additional funding for immigration judges to go down there and process these claims in a speedy way that makes sense for both the people applying for asylum and also Americans. Talk about how this adds a another, I guess, level of court battles with the administration basically wanting to shut down asylum altogether um, and what the lower court is going to say about that uh, because 
as a nation, as a country, as the United States of America, that is part of our immigration system, that you can seek asylum, you can try to get into this country legally. The president doesn't trust that system clearly, which is why he wants to shut down asylum altogether. So then where is the compromise here? Yeah, I think we have to preserve the asylum system for those who truly need it. I mean, it was set up, the U.S. actually has um, refugee status and asylum status. Refugee status is what the rest of the world goes by, and they, people apply for a refugee status and in fear of persecution or in fear of um, or fleeing war or other crimes and violence and then they go to a country that is safe and they are a, they get a refugee status um, the u.s. also has asylum which is the same thing but it's something that people apply for once they are legally in the united states or not legally once they're present in the united states or at a port of entry so we have both of those systems and they need to be there for a reason because there's a legitimate need across the world for people who are fleeing violence or a few fleeing persecution but our problem right now is, is that mm -hmm. people are using the asylum system to come into the country for other reason. And once they get here, there's a vast majority of asylum claims that end up not being valid. They may pass the credible fear claim once they first get here, but yeah. then when they get in front of an immigration judge, those are kicked out and no longer valid anymore, and they have to leave the country. And so right. what we really need to do is we need Congress to step up and fix our legal immigration system as much as providing uh, mm -hmm. resources to stop illegal the immigration. Is, yeah, is one point three billion dollars going to do that I would say that's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things but we're gonna have to wait and see what they um, hammer out thank you very mm -hmm. much Lauren Claffey for talking to us we appreciate it yeah no problem